Now, before going into details of the horizontal dressing of the peritoneum, let's see some important points regarding the vertical dressing of the peritoneum. Here we can appreciate the from the umbilicus, the parietal layer of the peritoneum, it passes upward as a sickle shaped fold and this sickle shaped fold it is called as the falciform ligament of the liver and this falciform ligament having two margin this the anterior margin it is attached with the anterior abdominal wall and this posterior margin it is free and it is sickle shaped and it contains the ligamentum teres hepatis which is actually the obliterated left umbilical vein and it also contains one para umbilical vein and this falciform ligament it is going to reach up to the inferior surface of the liver at the inferior border of the liver it passes to the anterior superior surface of the liver and at this side this becomes the visceral peritoneum Now after reaching up to the upper part of the liver, this falciform ligament, both the layers, they are going to diverge with each other and on the left side, it is going to form the left triangular ligament and on the right side, it is going to form the superior layer of the coronary ligament. So for the more detail, let's see one more picture. So here, it is the picture of a liver from the anterior side and here we can appreciate this is the falciform ligament and this falciform ligament it is it is going to diverge into two layers on the left side it is going to uh, cover the upper surface of the left sided liver and going to form the left triangular ligament while on the right side it is going to form the superior layer of the coronary ligament. Now when we trace this right sided falciform ligament or we can say the right layer of the falciform ligament which is going to form the superior layer of the coronary ligament it is going to cover this whole anterior surface as well as it is going to cover the inferior margin of the lever as well as it is going to cover the inferior surface as well as the posterior surface of the liver. So here this area it is the inferior surface of the liver and this is the area of the posterior surface of the liver. So this right layer of the falciform ligament it is going to cover this inferior surface of the liver also and it is going to reach and form the inferior layer of the coronary ligament. So here this is the inferior layer of the coronary ligament. So the superior layer and the inferior layer of the coronary ligament in this view, we can say that it is going to enclose one area and this area, it is the bare area of the liver, which is not going to be covered by peritoneum and the margin where both the superior layer and the inferior layer of the coronary ligament it is going to fuse with each other and this area it is called as the right triangular ligament and in the same figure on the posterior surface of the liver we can say that this layer it is the falciform ligament which is going to diverge into two layers one into the left triangular ligament on the left side and, and the superior layer of the coronary ligament on the right side the left layer of this falciform ligament after going to enclose the left triangular ligament it is going to continue with the left side of the fissure for the ligamentum venosum and after enclosing this left layer of the ligamentum venosum this layer it is going to continue as the porta hepatis and going to form the right free margin here and this porta hepatis it includes the hepatic artery, portal vein and the bile duct. Now from here this porta hepatis the layer of the peritoneum which is continuous uh, with the layer of the lesser sac and this layer of the lesser sac it is going to form the right margin of ligamentum venosum and after enclosing this caudate lobe of the liver 
it is going to continue with the inferior layer of the coronary ligament now and after enclosing this inferior layer of the coronary ligament it is going to reflect over the right side to the gallbladder and going to cover the right kidney let's see in one separate image so for that we have to take one sagittal section and in this sagittal section we can appreciate that this is the sagittal section of the abdominal cavity taken just right to the epiploic foramina and here we can see that this is the falciform ligament what we are talking about and this is the superior layer of the coronary ligament and the superior layer of the coronary ligament after reaching to the superior surface of the liver it is going to continue and cover the anterior superior aspect of the liver then it reaches up to the sharp inferior border of the liver and then going to cover the gallbladder as well as it is going to reach up to the inferior surface of the liver where it is going to form this inferior layer of the coronary ligament so the area of the liver between the superior layer and the inferior layer of the coronary ligament it is bare and this is called as the bare area of the liver now this inferior layer of the coronary ligament it is going to cover the anterior aspect of the right kidney as well as the right suprarenal gland and going to continue to cover the anterior aspect of the ascending colon and this fossa it is going to be formed by the inferior layer of the coronary ligament above and inferiorly this fossa it is open to the peritoneal cavity and this fossa it is called as the hepatorenal pouch so here this fossa it is the hepatorenal pouch which is bounded anteriorly by the inferior surface of the liver superiorly by the inferior layer of the coronary ligament and posteriorly by the right kidney and inferiorly it is open to the peritoneal cavity so this hepatorenal pouch it is also called as the pouch of the morrison and this pouch is the most important clinically as it is the most dependent part in the supine position so the fluid may accumulate into this pouch when the patient is lying down now when we trace this layers just left to the epiploic foramina we can appreciate that this layer of the falciform ligament it is going to cover here and going to form the superior layer of the coronary ligament and it is going to cover the anterior surface of the liver which is up to the inferior surface and uh, going to form the part of the lesser omentum and this is the anterior layer of the lesser omentum as we have already discussed and then it is going to cover the antero superior surface of the stomach and then going to form the part of the greater omentum which is the four folded layer in the infantile stage but in case of the adult stage the second and third layer they are going to fuse with each other with the zygosis and only two layers persist and second and third layer of the greater omentum it is going to be formed by the lesser sac as we have already discussed and this greater omentum it is going to cover the mesentery and the loops of the intestine which is situated behind it and this greater omentum also having three free borders one is the inferior free borders and one on the right side and on the left side it is also free and this greater omentum it is called as the policeman of the abdomen because it is going to seal the infection whenever the infection occur to the any part of the abdominal cavity this greater omentum reaches their site and that will seal this it seal that infection and the macrophages present within the greater omentum may help the the infection to resolve so it is also called as the policeman of the abdomen now when we trace this parietal peritoneum below the umbilicus we can see the five folds formed by the parietal peritoneum and this five folds which is present in the midline this median umbilical fold it contains urecus as it contained just next to the median umbilical fold on the each side 
it has one more fold and this fold these are called as the medial umbilical fold and this medial umbilical fold it covers the obliterated umbilical artery of both the sides and just lateral to this medial umbilical fold we find one more fold and this fold it is called as the lateral umbilical fold and this lateral umbilical fold it encloses the inferior epigastric artery and after forming these five folds this parietal peritoneum it is going to continue as the visceral peritoneum which is going to cover the urinary bladder